should be the video right after we install these new tires. Check these things out. Kenda Washugal 2s. I haven't even gotten a ride in on them yet. I hope we'll do a test ride at the end of this video. We'll just get to see how they work. See if I can tell if there's a noticeable improvement. Alright. So, as an example here, this is a uh, what we call a worn out chain and some worn out sprockets. Uh, a healthy chain should not be able to uh, create one of the vowels in the alphabet. Alright, here we go. We got our DID 428VX X-Ring sealed chain. It took me a while to find this because typically you'll see people say, oh you can't put an X-Ring chain on a small bike like this because it'll draw too much power. Well, maybe that was true with an O-ring chain, but I've been running X-ring chains on my other bike, and I haven't noticed any difference. These chains have just about as much flexibility in each link and very little friction. So instead of having to mess around with an unsealed chain like this that always wants to end up wearing out within a year, we're going to go ahead and try this chain here and just hope for the best. I mean, I already think it's going to work just fine, so I'm not that worried, but this will be an interesting video. I've also got this uh, Motion Pro chain breaker and riveting tool. This is the tool I used in my last video uh, to break the chain so I don't have to get in there with a die grinder and cut it. So yeah, we'll use that. And we've got our 17 millimeter open end and closed end wrench, non-ratcheting. We we'll use that to uh, take off the axle nut or to uh, hold the axle bolt end so it doesn't spin. We've got a 17 millimeter socket here. We're gonna use to remove the axle nut. We've got my 3 8 ratchet as well. We've got a 10 millimeter socket with an extension so that we can remove this side cover from the uh, front sprocket. Got a 12 millimeter long socket, a deep well socket, so we can remove this adjuster nut from the brake rod. And we've got my angled pliers, so we can uh, we can put on the clip type master link. I already took this chain off in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's pretty uh, funny. Uh, that video will be posted pretty soon here, pretty much not too soon after this video is posted, so go check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. It's not so much about putting the tires on as it is the experience, so it was a lot of fun. And it was also pretty hot, so I, uh, I get funny when I'm worn out and tired. Alright, we got our tools, we got the tools. We've got the chain, and uh, I'll get the sprockets out in just a minute here, and uh, we'll get started. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, I just went and got the sprockets. Here we've got a JT sprocket, made in, uh, what is it, Thailand? I'm trying JT sprockets this time, a DID chain, yep, another JT sprocket. For the rear and for the counter shaft with the front sprocket. Well, I'm hoping to make this video a little bit shorter than my my previous videos. I've already made a video on how to chain a uh, chain sprocket on this bike already, and that video was close to an hour long. It's pretty hot out here today. And uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stand out here and talk and work on this thing. So. I'm just going to show the most important things, things that require a little bit of nuance or skill to do. And uh, that way I'll still have a little bit of time left over at the end of the video to give a nice test ride of this bike, see how the, the chain runs and how uh, if it's really quiet or whatever, if it gives me more power. Adds 5 horsepower. So uh, alright, we'll get this work area cleaned up a little bit and we'll get, get to work. Didn't think I uh, was gonna let this chain go easy. 
Bye. For now. All right, to start, got the power ratchet. Got a 12 millimeter socket here, deep well socket. Gonna go ahead and remove this brake rod. Have a spring, and we have a washer. Don't forget the washer. Okay, we have our 17 millimeter socket. We have our 17 millimeter closed end and open end wrench. Gonna go ahead and remove the axle. Just making sure it's in loosening direction, otherwise known as lefty loosey. Have a washer and a snail cam. All right, on this side, got the bolt, got the axle, got a washer and a snail cam. Pull the axle. Just carefully slide the tire out. We've got an axle spacer here. On this side, we've got another spacer. We've got our drum brake caliper. Set that to the side. All right, there's our rear wheel. I'm gonna go get a chisel and we'll knock these stays down flush and then we'll go ahead and remove these nuts. Got our uh, scrunch, a little screwdriver tip on the end. This is the same one we used in the previous video. Or uh, the video, the last video I made of changing a chain and sprocket on this bike. Figured I'd go again with what I did before, because it's funny. Alright, this is one of those redundant parts. So I'm going to go ahead and abridge this, I'll do the rest of these off camera. As you can see, all I'm doing there is just trying to knock those a little bit flat so that they're not going to interfere with the nuts spinning off. And I'll go ahead and come back when I'm ready to remove these nuts. Alright, we're ready to remove the nuts attaching the sprocket to the rear hub. Alright, we got them all loose now, so we'll go ahead and we'll spin these off, and we'll come back when I'm ready to take this sprocket off. Alright, here's the stays I was talking about. These ones are getting a little mangled, but you can see that they, they get folded up, and they hold the nut from backing off. Alright, here we go. Well, here's the old sprocket. It's uh, dirty, coated in wax that I won't have to be using this time. I'll just be putting silicon oil on it now that I have a sealed chain. So that's going to be pretty nice. All right, let's go remove the front sprocket. All right, we've got our 10 millimeter socket on a power ratchet. Just going to go ahead and take these bolts out. All right, we're gonna need a hex key to get these locking bolts out of this locking flange, and we'll be right back. All right, we've got our four millimeter hex key, and we're gonna go ahead and remove these two locking nuts from the front sprocket. We're gonna need to put the bike in gear so that we can have the sprocket not twist around on us when we're trying to loosen these. Alright, we'll go ahead and back these out, take that one out. Now this gets spun a couple degrees, and then it lines up with the splines, and we should be able to just remove it. There we go. A little bit of crud on my shaft here. I think, I think it's just wax, but now on further inspection, it looks like I might be doing a counter shaft seal on this bike at some point soon. A good load of junk in there. Alright, got this off. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this little washer here. This little locking washer. Alright, go ahead and get this cleaned up. We'll clean up these little lock bolts here. 
and we'll come back when we're ready to put this front sprocket on. Alright, we've got the locking washer here. We've got the little, it lock, these are the little lock bolts that bolt into the sprocket, attaching this to the sprocket. And these little splines get misaligned here. There's a little cut in the counter shaft that allows them to misalign when turned a little bit and that prevents the counter shaft sprocket from coming off. Also took some uh, chain cleaner, sprayed it in here, got rid of a bunch of the junk. I didn't get it out of the pressure washer so it's still a little dirty but the majority of the junk from around the seal and all around the case is, is gone. I also have the counter shaft sprocket that came off just so I can show you what wear looks like. See how those teeth are kind of cupped like this and angled forward? It's because this spins this way and the, uh, the roller rolls and kind of digs itself a hole in the base of this tooth. This should have been replaced a while ago. I've run this chain and sprockets for three years in case you've uh, watched the channel for three years. I think the DID chain that came on this bike was better than the Sunstar chain. I think the Sunstar sprockets have held up pretty good, but the chain, the chain not so much. So I'm uh, trying out these JT sprockets and we're going back to a DID chain. We're gonna see how this goes for the next three years. All right, let's get these out of the package. I got these uh, scissors. Well, that was easy. This rock has a nice taper to it. It's got a nice finish. The uh, the Sunstar sprocket was painted black. This one's kind of a like a tumbled or sandblasted finish almost. I got the big sprocket here, the rear sprocket. We're sticking with uh, OEM ratios. OEM ratios. I almost made that joke in my last video three years ago. Figured I'd go ahead and just make the joke this time. Let's see, uh, sprocket, corona, hmm, yikes. All right, let's go ahead and scissor this open. Nice, check that out, that is a nice looking sprocket. It's even taking fingerprints too, crazy. Bye. Let's go ahead and reattach the rear sprocket. This has a uh, cut inside and it has a tapered side. We're going to put the tapered or beveled side facing towards the hub. And as far as which direction or angle this goes in, I don't believe it matters. So, I'll go ahead and, for whatever reason, line up the logo with the rim lock. Got our sprocket nut stays. This one's a little mangled up. I think next time I do this, I'll probably have to go get some new ones. All right, let's go ahead and tighten these nuts down. I'm gonna tighten these to one grunt. Make sure we're in the tightening mode here. I'm gonna go one grunt because that's how science actually works. got an extra one because the first grunt was a little bit of a half one. Oh yeah, I even got a little bit of a cut on my finger here. Pretty sure I got that cut the last time I did this. Funny how things repeat themselves. Hey, what's this? A cold chisel? Jeez, I kind of scratched up the uh, sprocket there. Junk. That's all we need to do for this rear sprocket. Let's move on to the front sprocket. We're gonna go ahead and install the front sprocket, counter shaft sprocket, the logo facing out. I went ahead and put a little grease on the counter shaft sprocket. 
so that it won't rust up. Now we can go ahead and install this and we'll turn it until it aligns with the bolt holes in the front sprocket. Go ahead and uh, spin those in. For some reason this one uh, seems to be a little off. Not really sure why. Hmm. Honestly these don't look like they're going to go in. The hole on the front sprocket here is a little misaligned. It's kind of interesting. Never encountered that before. The sprocket is specifically for this motorcycle so I don't know what the problem is. Well, there seems to be a little bit of a problem here. These holes are too close together. So I can only get one of these lock bolts in there at a time. So what I'm going to have to do, I shouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to have to, because it's the only sprocket that I'm going to be putting on this bike right now. I'm going to have to take these holes and just grind a little bit of material from this side of the hole and this side, just this side, a little bit so the bolt can go just a little bit farther out. And I'll remove just a teeny bit of material with a little file from both sides, that way I've still got a little bit of material on the outside there. Alright, I'll be back, I'll get this fitted up. Alright, as you can see here, I've shaved just a little bit of material out of these holes, just make them just a little bit wider. Alright, let's go ahead and put it on. Alright, let's go ahead and tighten them. Alright, now those bolts are tight. Let's go ahead and reinstall the rear wheel. Go ahead and reinstall the rear brake caliper. Make sure to reinstall this spacer and this spacer. This one goes inside the wheel seal. We go ahead and grab our rear axle here so we can get ready to put it in. Go ahead and spin that all the way forward. Go ahead and put on our right side snail cam, our washer, and our axle nut. Go ahead and put our snail cams all the way forward, and we'll go ahead and snug up our axle nut. Just snug. Alright, now we've got the rear wheel installed, we've got the rear sprocket installed, and we've got the new front sprocket installed. I just realized that with this JT sprocket there's actually a little bit of gap between the sprocket and the and the hub now. That's a little different. Something to note. Alright, let's get that chain out of the package. Before we get the chain out of the package, let's go ahead and reassemble this rear brake. Got our washer, got our spring. Go ahead and put that through. We'll put our adjuster nut on. Alright, we've got our chain here. Let's go ahead and get it out of the package. Alright, here we go. We've got our clip type master link. We've got four X rings. We've got a little packet of grease. Do not eat. It's a good idea. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on and we'll go ahead and we'll lay this chain over the sprockets and we'll bring it full circuit to right about here and then we'll go ahead and cut the chain where we need it and then we can go ahead and install our clip type master link and we should be good to go. Yeah, you can just see how tight this chain is. No slop in it. Put the bike in neutral so the front sprocket can spin. Go ahead and tuck that chain up through there. Go down here, grab that chain. I'll tell you, that was easier already. If that was a non X ring chain, I would have been fighting with it. Now, first encounter here is the fact that I'm not going to be able to get this through my BBR chain guide. That's a little bummer. Kind of expected this. But I got a little bit of a solution here, I think. Go ahead and put that in the sprocket. And we'll just kind of ram it up through there and let it make its own path. Uh... Alright, 
right now we've got our chain there. I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and temporarily put the master link through. I'm not going to put any of the uh, X rings in there or any of the grease. We'll just go ahead and put both links on and we'll pull the chain back through. I just loosely put the old master link from the old chain back on here so that I can hook this and pull it through but it's catching on the tire so I gotta unhook that from the tire go ahead and force this around so our link is down there now looks like we uh, had the chain pop off looks like the chain kind of wants to get rotated not really sure why it's doing that it's getting all crooked on me yeah so it appears this is being kind of a turd so that this BBR chain guide is kind of in the way I'm not a fan of that Well, this chain might be a little crooked, but it'll wear its way through. It'll wear a nice new path in this uh, chain guide here, so I'm not terribly worried about it. All right, we've got our chain breaker here. All right, we've got a 428 chain, and this pin is the one I used for the last 428 chain, so we're just gonna go ahead and install that. Go ahead and install the jam bolt. All right, just want to make sure you remove this little insert here so you can fit that pin in there. Go ahead and install our handle. All right, that's all we need. We're ready to break the chain. Well, I'd say we've found where we need to uh, cut our chain. We want to take everything from here off. So let's go ahead and fit our chain breaker tool over that link. Go ahead and tighten it down. Now we can go ahead and tighten down the jammer rod, or the pusher rod. Go ahead and tighten this down. I'm going to go ahead and try to use an impact on this, because this is going to be pretty hard to hold and, and uh, torque on it, so we'll be right back. Alright, we've got a 14 millimeter socket on our impact. We're going to see what happens. Or start at the lowest power setting. Lowest power setting appears to be working just fine. All right, let's go ahead and back our pusher rod all the way out. Almost all the way out. We don't want to completely remove it. Don't want to completely remove this because there's a spring and the pusher rod inside. All right here. Right here is our little riveted pin that we pushed out. Set that to the side. Now we can remove the excess. As you can just see, we, uh, we just lost two of the little X rings that were in between there. And unfortunately, this is what has to go in the uh, waste bin or spare parts bin because it's unusable right now. All right, so next we're ready to install our master link. We'll have to place the X rings on the master link on this side and we'll have to put them on this side as well and then we'll take our riveter tool and we'll put on the pressing clamps and we'll go ahead and push the two links together because this is a even though it's a clip type master link it has kind of these little shoulders here where this uh, outer link needs to be pushed on and then we'll go ahead and finish up the install all right let's get to it all right, here's our four X rings. We've got a little packet of grease there. And what I'll need to do is apply grease to these pins. Nice. All right, so we'll need to we'll put the X rings all the way back onto these pins on the side of the link there. Then I'll put grease on the pins, work it all around, make sure that it's fully coated in grease. And then we'll go ahead and insert this through the links of the chain, like that. Then we'll put our, a little bit more grease on this side. We'll put our X rings on here and then we'll take our final link here, our outside link, and we'll have to press it on with the Motion Pro tool over there. Once that's been pressed on, we can attach our master link clip and we'll go from there all right all right as you can see here 
I've gone ahead and I've installed the master link, or at least the, the far side of it. So I've gone ahead and packed the pins with grease. I installed the two X rings on this side, and I greased up and packed in some grease around these X rings here. Now we can go ahead and press this outer link on. Let's go ahead and set that on there. Now we'll get my Motion Pro presser tool. Go ahead and back this off. Install the slotted to go on this side. Oh, okay. Well, I stand corrected. This doesn't actually fit in that side, so we're going to do with the slotted side on the back side, on the inside towards the hub. And we'll put the side with the little holes in it facing me. Go ahead and lightly push this in. Alright, let's go ahead and see what happens here. Well, it looks like we need to push it just a little bit more. Well, I can't get it to push on. The, uh, the holes... Oh, well, that sucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just great, just great. Yeah, the thing fell on the ground. Love it. And of course, we had that sandstorm, so there's little pieces of sand stuck to my seals now. Oh, that's just, this doesn't get any better, does it? I swear. Look at this. What, what the f**k, man? This is just ridiculous. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Like, really? You gotta be f**king me. Why did that have to happen? Alright, well, I can't get anything else to work, so we're gonna have to try and put this pusher, clamper, riveter in from this side. Well, I can't seem to get it to uh, stay clamped, so I'm going to have to mess around with this until I can get it to have enough preload on that to where I can actually get that clip link on there. Okay, well I found out that neither of these actually work. These are not the right size, and they're, this groove is not deep enough, so that might work on a 520 chain, but not a 428. So I found what actually works. I don't need any inserts. All I need is the bare anvil here and the bare clamper bolt. And I'm just going to go ahead and fit this over this link here. Actually, we'll do it from the other side now. We'll fit it over this link here, snug it down, take our impact on the lowest setting. And there it's pushed. Should be clamped on just enough so that we can get our clip type master link on there. Well, no, that one's pushed on enough. Come on now. <laughs> I can't get it off. Come on. It's being a stinkered. Come on. There we go. Yep. Alright, so they're both. They're just being difficult. That's all. Nothing's wrong. Just being difficult. Alright, we got the clip link somewhat aligned here. And we'll go ahead and get these on there. Everything's so new. It doesn't want to bite. There we go. Alright, so that clip link is installed. Uh, we'll need to tension the chain a little bit. Alright, there we go. We got the chain cut to length. We've got it installed. We've got the master link in place. Now what we need to do is see if we can put a little bit of uh, tension on this chain. And then we'll go from there. We'll just go ahead and loosen up our axle bolt. We will take our little chisel here and we'll go ahead and set our adjusters to the third setting. We'll probably have to adjust it out a little bit more. We'll put it to the fifth position. Now we'll go ahead and snug up our axle bolt. This isn't going to be the final adjustment because we're going to need to have to wear in this chain guide since this chain is just a little bit wider than the old chain because as you can see it uh, doesn't turn the freest. Alright, I'll go get the key and we'll go ahead and get this thing fired up and put it into gear and let it just self clearance. Turn 
the key on. Turn the gas on. You can watch the bowl filling there. You got the see-through fuel filter. Let's see how this thing starts up. I haven't started it in two weeks. Yeah, that, that takes a lot of drag, eh? Oh, it's stalled out. I might need to uh, turn the idle screw up just a little bit. It's going to continue to wear a little bit, but at least, uh, at least it moves pretty much freely by hand here. You can see we've got a little bit of a burr going on there, but that's just Delarin and well, it'll wear. It's made to wear. And at least the, uh, it's, it only seems to hang up just a little bit on the, uh, on the master link, but honestly, this thing with the old chain hung up just a little bit with the old master link anyways, so that's not even a big deal. It's plastic, it's not metal. If this is metal, I'd have a, I'd have a big deal going on, but. All right, so let's just go ahead and reinstall our little side cover here, and then we will be done with this install, and we can get on to that uh, test ride. Well, actually, we will need to put a little bit more tension in that chain, but other than that, this thing is almost ready to ride. Alright, we'll get those tightened down and then we'll go ahead and readjust the chain and this thing will be ready to ride. Alright, we need to put a little bit of tension in this chain. It's a little bit sloppy right now. Let's go ahead and adjust it. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and put it to the sixth position. Alright, we put it to the seventh position, and that looks that looks really good. We won't know exactly until we set this thing on the ground, but so far I think that that's pretty good. One thing to do is to uh, one thing to do when you're tightening this up 
tightening up the axle is to hold the rear brake, otherwise it misaligns the rear brake shoes and your brakes barely work. Yeah, go get them. All right, this is cumbersome. Okay. All right, well, hopefully that rear brake works just fine. All right, let's get this thing off the stand. Now that I'm sitting on the ground, the suspension is compressed just a little bit, and my chain tension is what I'd call perfect, so. I think we are ready to go ahead and do a test ride on this. Just this rear brake again. <laughs> oh. Gee whiz. I didn't realize this thing was so worn down. These brake shoes apparently have a lot more wear on them than I realized. Well, that'll be another video. That rear brake is still out of adjustment. Mm. There you go. That's right where I want it. Chain is, uh, well, it's probably loosening up just a little bit, so there'll be another adjustment on there and on the way.
think I need to check my uh, front tire pressure. The front wheel feels just a little wobbly. But uh, I think I, I think I filled this up to 17 PSI. So that's probably why. Hey, okay, there we go, 15.5. We'll just set that at 15. Let's check the front PSI. 16 and a half. 15 PSI. All right, let's go. good nice slow all right well I'm making progress on the wheelies that's pretty good for uh, not riding in a week if not longer I haven't ridden this bike in well three weeks so uh, yeah I'm gonna stop there because that was a that was like two good wheelies in a row. Stop on a good note. Cause I'm already getting tired. Oof. All right, it, it wheelies good. Tires are good. Not slipping on the rim. Tires are gripping. The chain is a uh, it's a ripping. So uh, let's just buzz around and then we'll finish up the video. Uh, Gotta kick it.
Hey, check that out. Just bringing it up and then hitting the brake instead of relying on the throttle. That's what I was doing there because on the big bike sometimes the power just uh, you give it a clutch pop and it just a little bit more than you expect so this is why I love this bike so much. I can get out practice on this bike and have a generally just have a blast and it's got just enough power to get me everywhere I need to go and not too much power that it surprises me so great bike Overall, really happy with these tires. Won't really know long term until, you know, long term. So, uh, yeah, stick around for future videos on this bike and the other bike and the TRX and the XR. I can tell this is already gonna need a little bit of a, an adjustment, but it seems to have broken in just fine. And yeah, you can put a 428X ring chain on your DTR125. Heck, if Honda can put them on their CRF 125s and their CRF 150Fs, I don't see why this bike can't have one. Well, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up. If you got any questions, leave a comment. If you want to see future or upcoming videos on this channel, consider subscribing. Alright, thanks for watching.